We will start with a prayer, our evening proceedings. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunattu Sahaviryam Karabhavahe Jejasvinavadhi Tamastumavitvishavahe Om Shanti 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 Om Purdhu Vasuvah Tatsavidurvare Venyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Diyoyo Rakta Chodayad Good evening, Namaste and Jai Swamayan and a very warm welcome to you all here this evening. Over the last several weeks, uh, all of us have received hundreds of emails and I'm sure uh, some of them uh, were uh, long essays and probably we didn't have the time to read through every word of it. But we know that some, some, a lot of uh, activity has taken place on this uh, new proposed uh, uh, legislation uh, on caste on discrimination based on caste uh, in the UK. And, and we are all aware that it is such a sensitive issue. It's an important issue for the Hindus because we, we all know that there is, there is no such thing as uh, discrimination amongst the Hindus. Uh, and the report which was uh, used to justify the uh, inclusion of this uh, cast in the, in the uh, legislation is non-conclusive as well as uh, incorrect in so many ways uh, and that is the reason why we, we do need to take issue with this. We have uh, at long last I think uh, I would say this is a humble beginning. We Hindus have had a need to get together and, and act with one voice for, for, for decades but we have not really done that so far. And that's why this is a humble beginning to something which, which uh, can, uh, we can all be proud of uh, uh, in setting up the alliance of uh, all the Hindu organization body was set up only a few weeks ago. It is uh, relatively young uh, and uh, we can all be proud of the enormous amount of work they've done over the last few weeks. They spent nights and weekends giving up their own, own uh, personal time to uh, have a dialogue, a meaningful dialogue uh, with the government. So uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to now hand over uh, uh, the mic to, to AHO so that they can then uh, give us a, uh, a complete presentation of what has happened and what is the way forward for us as Hindus uh, together. Thank you. of uh, Hindu organizations for the first time, and many of you will remember this, that uh, many years ago, the single most point that everybody came together from the Hindu community was to save the temple. The Bhaktivedanta Mana was uh, the one issue that affected Hindus <coughs> right across the country. And 20 or so years later, this caste legislation issue that's actually come up has brought the Hindu community together. Various Hindu umbrella organizations were working towards uh, trying to do something about uh, challenging uh, this legislation, but it came to a stage where, and unfortunately, the government was not listening to a single Hindu organization. And we all got together, it was a very informal meeting, and we decided that we as Hindus need to come together to form some kind of voice, not necessarily a body like the Alliance, but some kind of a voice where we can speak as one uh, family and as, as Hindus as a whole. And that's where we actually started off uh, the Alliance of Hindu Organizations. And instantly, uh, over 10 umbrella organizations came together, Hindu Forum, Hindu Council, National Council of Hindu Temples, Jean Mayer Mission, Bab Swaminayan Temple, um, uh, National Hindu Student Forum, City Hindu Networks. And the list has been growing over the last uh, three and a half weeks. And a phenomenal amount of work. Uh, has actually been done over the last three and a half weeks to try and challenge uh, this legislation. It's something where we wanted to also try and engage professionals within the Hindu community 
uh, to actually lead on this campaign with us. And it seems so proud, uh, and I feel so proud that today the people who have been leading uh, most of the work that the Alliance have done has been our young Hindus. The city Hindu people, professional lawyers, marketeers, PR people have actually been the voice who have been working with the elders of the community to try and get that message across uh, to the government. It's been difficult, but one thing that actually has come out of this is that we can see here today that so many organisations have come forward to try and continue to fight this legislation. So the legislation was introduced in 2010 by Labour. The Conservatives were in opposition and said they don't want to legislate, they want to educate. The Conservative government took a surprise U-turn not so long ago and accepted the bill. The Lib Dems obviously had a role to play in the background, but no one really got heard from the Lib Dems, so we don't know what their stance was. Now, the fact is, everybody in this room would have a different view on who is to blame, which party is to blame, which MP didn't listen to us, etc, etc. However, the key is to continue our unity as Hindus and to talk as Hindus. If we talk as different organisations, the message gets diluted. If you talk as Hindus, it's a very strong and powerful voice, which this campaign has proved quite Okay, so um, what we're all discussing here today is the Equalities Act, which is what we're all talking about, uh, and the fact that uh, caste has now become a protected category uh, within the... NISA stands for the National Institute of Economics and Social Research. So supposedly it's a very credible organisation who the government hired to do some research to find out whether there is caste discrimination in the UK or not. Now, the report interviewed 32 people nationally in the UK. Out of 32, 31 were non-Hindus. There was only one Hindu case who said, yes, I have been discriminated against because of my caste. If you will notice, it also says th only three people were randomly selected. So out of 32, 29 people were handpicked by the Dalit community or the pro-legislation campaign group and provided them to NISA to interview them. So only three people were unbiased in the entire report. Seemingly, this evidence which has been cited is evidence enough for the government to legislate on. There seems to be no consideration of the potential consequences of this piece of legislation. Um, when, we, when we tried to approach MPs and said, well, hold on a minute, you said you don't want this, well, what's going on? They said, oh, well, the Royal Assent is today, and we have to pass the bill because cost is just one of the issues. There are three other issues within this bill which we can't compromise on, so we just have to compromise and accept it. And that was the entire reason of bringing cost into legislation, because they have to compromise, because the Queen was speaking today. Caste legislation is supposedly not religion specific. The rhetoric of the Lords in this debate on the other hand clearly seems to be so. Everyone in that debate was speaking about Hinduism. There was hardly any mention of any other religion. That sounds like discrimination to me. I was born a Hindu in this country, and for the first time in my life, caste has become an issue. And that's ironically because a piece of legislation which was meant to eradicate caste discrimination. According to the law, I am now recognised as being high caste. And from what the law seems to suggest, I am therefore a potential caste racist. No longer innocent until proven guilty, but guilty till proven innocent. That sounds like discrimination to me. I, I don't know how much of an issue caste is, but as a young person, it didn't really bother me uh, until all of this came into effect. And I thought, hold on a minute, am I a higher caste or a lower caste? If I don't give a job to a lower caste, does that mean I'm discriminating? I don't know. Um, since this law came into effect not so long ago, the Dalit community has submitted 6,000 letters to MPs to say, we don't want a consultation for two years, because that's what the government said. We only want a two-month consultation. They are saying that the NISA report has proved there's caste discrimination, so there is no need for the government to consult 
Hindus, Sikhs, or any other religion. The AHO will continue to engage Hindu businesses, Hindu community organizations, temples, individuals, parliamentarians, and media in order to continue the momentum. So this meeting today is possibly the first of many, but we'd like you to go back to your communities and replicate the message so that the message gets delivered to the grassroots. I just want to uh, talk briefly about what's happening tomorrow. As you heard today, that it was a state opening of parliament and the legislation has actually been enacted today. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, through friendly MPs, uh, we are going to be starting uh, to have um, a tabling an EDM, an early day motion. And what we want to try and do is, the early day motion is very simple in the sense that we want this two year consultation period, and we think that we deserve this. You know, two months which the Dalit community are asking for is not going to be able to consult with the vast majority of uh, Hindus across the UK. So we are asking, and the EDM is going to be tabled uh, tomorrow by Bob Blackman MP, and we are hoping that it's going to be supported not just by conservative MPs, but I think, you know, without sounding party political bias, the Labour MPs who wholeheartedly actually voted for this legislation, this is the time for them to prove to us that yes, they support what we want as well. So it's our job now, after the EDM is actually tabled tomorrow, asking for a, two, a one or two year process for the consultation, for us to all speak to our local constituency MPs to ensure that they actually sign this EDM. This will put pressure on the government to ensure that this two months goes to two years. I'm a bit skeptical about this because, you know, right up until, you know, the legislation going through, we were hearing from one party to another, one party was saying to us, oh, don't worry about us, we're on your side, go and lobby so-and-so. We went to the other party and said, oh, don't worry about us, go and lobby the, you know, the other, other parties. And we were sort of like having a ping-pong event. So I don't think we can actually trust anything that's going to happen, you know, with this two months uh, consultation period. So, very, very important if we can all ensure that our own local MPs assign this EDM tomorrow. As I said before, we, we should be very proud that, you know, when I was growing up, my community, which is a Hindu community, didn't give me the option or the opportunity of being able to fight for Hindus. Today, through the alliance of Hindu organisations, we've actually given our youngsters the opportunity to fight this on our behalf. And you know, Jayesh Kapange is at the back there. Jayesh uh, represented us from a, from a legal point of view and had various meetings with government and actually had that factual um, uh, documentary evidence to be able to fight Kishan Bhatt as well through the Hindu uh, Lawyers Association, Pratik Datani. These people have been representing us in front of government and they've got to the stage where a vote which was one or two weeks before had a unanimous verdict of 128 or so votes was skittled down to 13 votes in the last debate. And that was as a result of the work that these guys were doing. So I think they're really good. And I hope this is a start that we have tremendously professional people within the Hindu community who needed this light to be able to stand up and vote and be part of what we want. As you heard most of them today, some of them didn't even know what caste they belonged to. And that's wonderful, you know, that, that shows you that there has been no discrimination. We've also started a, a brand new website as well, and it's quite a unique website where we put in all the information about this particular legislation. And that website is called www.mycasteishindu.org. Very simple. That has actually started to go on air today, it's gone live uh, this afternoon. But do you realise that this legislation is going to affect you as business leaders, where one day you can actually refuse somebody to have a job with yourself and you could be you know, seen as being caste racist and that's why you've actually not given them the job. The same thing happens with our temples. Many temples here happen in the country, the, the effect that this could possibly happen the Hindu-Christian dialogue as we stand here today at 10 to 8 in this country is probably at its all-time low that it's ever been. We've had a cleric, somebody who, you know, who boasts to be a, a bishop of Oxford and somebody who's meant to be you know, quite honourable in what he did and you heard it from himself what contempt he holds Hindus. I don't think that it's been emphasised enough 
as to how close we came to changing the history of this country on the day of that vote. If we had got 13 more laws to change their vote, we would have stopped this legislation. One of the other things that has been an education for me, certainly, and I'm sure for some of the other youngsters as well, is that government is not interested in reasons, it's not interested in logic, it's not interested in history, it's not interested in Dharma, it's not interested in the Vedas, it's not interested in Brim, it's not interested in any of our associations whatsoever. It responds to one tune, and that tune is numbers. That is the only thing that we have which we can mobilise and make use of. It is purely and solely down to numbers. Now the opposition, which takes many forms, some of which um, Sandeji has just alluded to, they have worked this out. You don't get 4,000, 4,500 signatures overnight. They have been planning this step by step for, for many, many years. So we are actually fighting a rearguard action. But I can't emphasize enough that this rearguard action is going to change our lives in this country. They already have test cases in, in the pipeline. The one thing that we have been unable to answer is simply this, by saying that legislation was possibly not the right and best path, we automatically became labelled as caste racist. The opposition very successfully, and government actually took this to heart, they established that anybody who objected to caste legislation was automatically caste racist. Now, I don't know whether you're aware of it, but the way law is established in this country is that whatever is articulated in the House of Lords and in the House of Commons gets recorded in Hansard, and it becomes part of the legal process. In Hansard, it's recorded that half of all Hindus in this country are caste racist. Right, so that is actually, I mean, we all know what uh, we're all like. We, we say we're gentle, we're accommodating, we're friendly, we're open, we're dharmic and everything else. But everybody who isn't a Hindu, has got now a reference point which says, according to Hansard, half of you are caste racist. So right now in this room, half of you are caste racist. And there is legal records to establish that. We are fighting this, and we have to fight this. So the numbers is what I want to come back to. If you don't do it, it's going to go through. If you don't do it, we will lose the consultation process. If you don't do it, the opposition have already got in place additional legislation to make sure that the caste system is taught in schools, that it's taught to hospital staff, that it's taught, and so that every government venue will be aware of this legislation, will be aware of what this caste issue is, and yet we are the one community who was singly absent in all of the evidence to date. In the same way that we were absent in the evidence to date, we are also absent by our voice. Now is the time, I think the Gita says, yada yada hi this is the time, right? We have to stand up and we have to articulate our voice very clearly on such a big issue. It will change the, the, the lives of the next generation if it doesn't change our own lives as well. So please, put aside whatever issues have existed in the past, they're all irre irrelevant. They really don't exist. They're tiny compared to the task that we're facing. Please come together and actually do things. Ask other people who you don't know, perhaps get them involved. We have to do this now, otherwise we will be regretting it, and we will be regretting it at a time when it's too late to do it. So as I say, give as much support as you can to the youngsters whenever they come to you. If you feel they're hassling you with phone calls and emails, please recognise that behind it, there's a huge amount of work that they've done, and a huge responsibility that they're willing to take on our behalf. We have to support them in what they're doing, and give uh, as much support as you can to anybody who's involved with the AHO to make this thing happen and become a reality. And thank you very much for that. Where is the Hindu vote camp in the UK? And it's quite simple. You've seen those who have actually been on our side. Those who have actually said, yes, this matters to Hindus, and as a result, I'm going to do this. So, you know, our key message to all of you is, please, think about where you are going to place your vote next. Look at the research. Look at what's happened to us, the one single issue that has affected the entire Hindu community over the last 20 years. And we haven't had that support from those people whose title, I suppose, are servants of us, haven't been able to do that for us. I stand before you here today as a phenomena which stands in this face, perhaps, 
of the stereotyping that's taking place for our community. Because if a Glaswegian can rise to become a community and religious leader in the Hindu community, then certainly I don't think in any way there is caste discrimination. Sardar Patel Memorial Society UK. A point of information that I, I, I wish to share with you, and this is, I'm going to read, read this uh, Castigating India. And this particular document I found on the internet. It's rather interesting. After independence, which had stalwarts like Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel, B.R. Ambedkar and Maulana Azad decided to do away with caste-based census, which was seen by them as divisive unanimously. Now, this is quite important for us all to understand that this legislation, if it comes into force, believe you me, we are going to be divided and we are going to become the slaves. We have got to do what we have been asked of us. And I think that if we don't do this, if we do not get together under a single flag, we're going to be in deep, deep trouble. Not for us, perhaps, but for the youngsters of tomorrow. Thanks so much, indeed. I would really be grateful if you have questions. Uh, may the man would like to throw a question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nikadeja, Secretary General of the National Congress of Gujarati Association, representing over 600,000 Gujarati. One is a, just a correction. When you mentioned about it being narrowed down to 13, and I read, and I stand corrected, when you narrow down to the 13, we should say narrow down to the, if we had only seven lords, means since we are in a majority. So I think you just make sure that your correction, I'm, I'm just trying to make it so that we only needed a seven, not 13. If we had a seven more, then we would have been in the interview. Secondly, I would like to thank uh, there are letters we require from you to you know the, us to take it back to our organization. Is that uh, ready for it or not? It's ready here and now for you to take away. Thank yeah, you very much indeed. Thank you. Any other questions I have here is that these are ten thousand people who said <coughs> that yes, I'd like to be described as a Dalit. But there are many who probably don't want to be described as that. And that's you know, it just makes a mockery of this legislation that you know